I'm just going to angle this a little better. All right. Welcome to the Cornhole Mindset Mania. And it's Michelle Thompson here, otherwise known as Cornhole Mish. And I'm excited because today's day three. So yesterday and the day before, we put together these two principles of setting goals and understanding the mindset traps. And so now that you know what your goals are going to be, what the mindset traps are for you to achieve these goals, now we want to actually put this together to create some kind of daily practice. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about how all of this then translates into actual gameplay um, and how these mindset things will come up and, and how you navigate those. So everything is building upon the other. So if you have not watched the previous videos, you can still hang out today and, and take all this in. But I do recommend that you go back and watch day one and day two just so you can kind of get the full scope of all of this important cornhole mindset mental stuff. Um, as I've said previously, cornhole is either equal parts physical and mental or maybe even more mental than physical. I guess it depends who you ask, but there's definitely an important mindset or mental part of our cornhole game that we do want to understand how to maximize. So talking about a daily routine, um, you guys are probably very comfortable with what your practice routine is for the mechanics. You might practice a certain amount of hours a day, or you might go to a certain amount of blind draws per week. You might practice certain kinds of shots or set things up so that you're constantly sharpening that knife of your mechanics. And I think that that's extremely important and awesome. However, very few people are talking about what else they need to do on a daily basis to work on the mindset or mental practice. And so that's what we're going to go over today. Now, I like to use something I learned from a book called The uh, Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Hal Elrod. So, um, you know, if you want to pick up the book, he, I'm going to go over what he teaches in the book. And most of what he talks about in that book, aside from the things I'm going to talk about, are how to sort of wrap your brain around and be okay with waking up super early to do it, which I don't think is necessary. I don't think you need to wake up at 4 a.m. to do this. I think if you did it at any point in the day, it's great. Um, but a big portion of his book is talking about how to get over the mindset hurdle of waking up really early. Um, to do this mindset practice first thing in the morning. So we're going to take the principles of the things he recommends you do in the morning, and then we're going to make it work for your life and your, uh, you know, you don't you can do it in the morning, you can do it in the afternoon, doesn't matter. All right, so there's going to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six things that you do, and you could do each thing for one minute, right? So this could essentially be a six minute routine. Um, you could do each thing for two minutes. You could do things for different increments. But just know that even if you did each thing I'm about to talk about for one minute, you would have massive transformation and success because that's how powerful these six things are. Um, so if it feels like a lot, then please set yourself up for success and give yourself the goal of doing each one for one minute, okay? All right, so the first thing on this list of things to do on a daily practice and you would do all these theoretically together so a, a six minute chunk of time or maybe 10 minutes with stuff happening in between and the first thing is silence now i talk a lot about meditation i love meditation um, you can absolutely use actual guided meditations for this section of this routine um, my favorite is meditationoasis.com which is also a podcast um, so meditationoasis.com is just one option. You can also just go on to you know, YouTube or your podcast apps and search meditations and find it. But the first thing I want you to do on a daily basis is some kind of silence. It could be one minute just focusing on your breath. It could be a guided meditation that you listen to, something to ground and center and get present. We talked about yesterday how important it is to be present for optimal gameplay. It is one of the mindset traps is that we go mindless, specifically when we're actually playing. We don't, you know, if you're in the zone, you're present. If you're not, then you're going to experience uh, some things differently than if you were present. So this first section of silence is crucial for your success to be able to do that when it matters the most under the most amount of pressure. Okay. So first thing, silence. Second thing is affirmations. Affirmations are basically just things you want to feel or things you want to believe or things you want to come true. And you want to say them in the present tense. Like, I am 
you know, um, a pro cornhole player. Uh, or And if that doesn't feel good because you're, let's say, you're not a pro cornhole player yet, um, then you would say, I am moving closer to pro status as a cornhole player each and every day. So we do want to make sure that when you're writing affirmations that you can energetically be aligned with them. So for some people it works to just say what it is that they want in the present tense, like I am a pro cornhole player, I am living it, I am believing it, I am breathing it, I am seeing it, right? And for other people they need to speak in the sort of process words, like I am closer and closer each and every day to uh, being a pro cornhole player. Um, I am doing the right things to be a pro, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I consistently throw all my bags in the hole, <laughs> whatever you want to say. But these affirmations are things that you can um, either write or just say out loud, but a few things that make you feel connected to what it is that you really want and can focus on those things. All right, the third thing is visioning. And visioning is something that you can easily piggyback off of affirmations because visioning is when you're actually visualizing what it is that you want in your own head. This is extremely powerful if you can bring your senses into the experience. So the more sensical information, like meaning your smells and sounds and touch and these different senses that we have, the more you can bring that into the vision. Um, the more powerful it is for your brain and the more uh, likely it is to happen. Remember, your brain does not know the difference between uh, dreaming and reality. So the m if something feels very real, uh, it's, a it's definitely going to think that it's, it's happening and will happen and should happen. Like it's foreshadowing. Um, so taking one minute and just seeing what it is that you want, see the bags go in the hole, see the trophy plaque thing, see Stacy, the commissioner, handing it to you, like whatever it is that you need to vision of what you want, um, have that going on in your head, okay? All right, the fourth one is going to be exercise. And exercise can, once again, be one minute. This is not about you know, oh my God, I have to do, you know, a million exercises every single day. Um, and this could be separate from any kind of formal exercise that you do, but just part, like this is a powerful process to do together. So whether you just do push-ups or squats or sit-ups or plank or something like that, just do some basic move. It could be stretching, yoga, do some basic movement or exercises in this little section of your daily routine, um, just to kind of get the body moving. When you attach mental and physical together, it's more powerful. Um, so get the blood flow going and um, get some movement happening in the body. All right, the next one is going to be read. Um, and I recommend that you read, you have some kind of book that you can read. Once again, it could be one minute of reading. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but pick a book that is actually going to help you with your mental game. Um, I've read a million books on mindset and various things. I can, I'm going to list some of my favorites off for you. Um, so if you want to go and grab some of these books, I highly, highly recommend them. The first one is You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. David Goggins is the mental toughness dude. He was a Navy SEAL. Um, like if you want to learn about mental toughness, David Goggins is your guy. Um, and his book is called You Can't Hurt Me. Um, it's, a it's a phenomenal book. Um, you can obviously buy the book, the one I've based this off of, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. That's a great book. Um, anything by Wayne Dyer I, has been immensely helpful for me. I love Wayne Dyer. I love everything he's written. I love the way that he makes me kind of look at life and feel a lot p more peaceful and calm about what I'm doing and more successful. Um, there's a great book called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. That's another amazing book, The Obstacle is the Way. There's a book called The One Thing, and I can't remember the author, but it's called The One Thing. Oh, cool, Dwayne. I'm so excited that you've read the book by David Goggins. It's such a great book. And I found David Goggins because I read, um, oh my, I totally forgot the guy's name, but Living with a Seal, where he had David Goggins live with him. And learn from him and that's when I found David Goggins and that's when I got his other book um, so I'm totally blanking on that guy's name though um, so that's another great book living with the seal 
Uh, Mastery, the Keys to Success and Long-Term Fulfillment by George Leonard, another great book. Um, the Keys to Success and Long-Term Fulfillment, it's called Mastery, George Leonard. And another one that I love that's maybe a little bit, um, a little woo-woo for some people, it's called Working with the Law by Raymond Hollywell. And it uh, goes into the universal laws that um, sort of govern, and but it's it's definitely more of like a spiritual kind of thinking in a way. Um, so I'll sort of say that, but I love that book, and I love teaching universal laws, and I use a lot of what Raymond Hollywell talks about to do that. Um, so, it, you know, to wrap up that section, you know, just have something that that inspires you. Um, you know, it can be articles online, but then you got to go find it, and that's just like another step. So I do recommend just grabbing a book that feels uplifting and helpful and will help you get more of what you want and have this as part of your daily routine, even if you only read two pages a day. Who cares? It's not about productivity or how much you get done. It's about the habits and the setting your mind into the right place so that it can actually help you get what you want. Um, and then the last one um, is about writing. And I don't know if any of you have ever journaled before or maybe you feel like that's not something you're interested in, but let me just be really clear that this journaling doesn't have to be anything specific or elaborate. You know, it's just, it could be like, I'm feeling X, Y, and Z today. And that could be it, right? It doesn't have to be crazy. Um, it could be sort of tying in the affirmations, right? So you're writing out, more like in depth, like, you know, I am, and, and make sure you're always writing in the present tense. So like, I am, you know, reaching all of my cornhole goals. I am hitting, you know, consistently over a 10 PPR. I am, you know, winning games that people didn't think I could win, whatever. So it's like writing out what you want. You could be doing that. You could be just sort of venting. Like, I'm really pissed. I threw like crap last night. Like, just get it out. Um, it could be something you learn, like maybe in the book you just read a minute earlier, you learned something and you want to sort of just process out what you just learned. So I just want to open up the door that the writing section doesn't have to be like, dear diary, <laughs> today I blah, blah, blah. Like it doesn't have to be that. It could just be any kind of form that's going to help you process or uh, envision what you want or, uh, you know, vent or all those different things. So. To summarize, the, the six things, silence, some kind of um, paying attention to your breath or meditation, affirmation, so stating what it is that you want, um, visioning, seeing what it is that you want and using your senses to make that more powerful, exercise, bringing the physical aspect of the body into these very powerful exercises that we're doing with our mind, reading, learning something, growing, being inspired, and then writing, which is the more of the processing section of all of these things. Um, so this is the daily routine. Like I said, if you did each thing for one minute, we're talking six minutes of your day. The thing is, is that other sports know that you have to do this kind of stuff. Other sports are, the elite athletes in other sports are working this much on their mental game every single day. Cornhole's definitely, you know, newer, and so it's not necessarily something we're talking about in this community of cornhole, but I promise you as it grows that there are going to be people that do put this kind of attention into their mental health and their mental game, and they are going to rise to the top um, because it's just not a purely physical game. So, you know, those that start to put in the time, you know, I would argue that Mark Richards is the first example of this. Um, he's so good with his mental stuff that he is doing things that people cannot believe. Not to take away from his skill, please. I'm not saying that he is brilliant at what his skill is, but he's also a little bit farther along in the mental game than most people, and it's really showing in the very high-pressure situations that he's been in. Um, so use that as inspiration that anybody can be that calm and cool and collected in those moments, but it takes practice of these things that we're talking about to get there. If you want to be consistent, if you want to be showing up in a way that you can, you just know you'll be grounded, you'll be in the zone, you'll be present, you'll be playing your best game, then you have to work on your mental game. And this is exactly how you do it. These are the things you do to be elite in life to be successful in life. These are the things that most people are not willing to do um, and will live a life that they maybe don't love. Um, and this is what 
will give you that edge if you are willing to put the time and energy and effort into doing it. And we're talking six minutes a day. So it's really not that much energy and effort if we're really being honest. Um, so that's what I recommend. Like I said, if you want to learn more about these six things, uh, Hal Elrod and the Miracle Morning is where I got it from. Um, yeah, even the number one player in the world gets nervous. Absolutely. And remember yesterday, I talked about, I don't know if you were there, Daniel, or watched it, I talked about how the emotions are never going to go away. Like, to be clear, Mark Richards absolutely feels nervous. It's not that he doesn't feel the things that we feel. That's not the case at all. It's that they don't mean anything. They don't cause any change um, in our actual physical bodies. Um, and there's no meaning from it. Like, I'm nervous, that means that I must not be as good as that person, or I'm nervous, that means this or that. So it's the meaning that we take from the emotion that becomes the challenge, not the emotion itself. Of course he feels nervous. He's human. <laughs> Last time I checked. Uh, so I don't know, maybe he's a robot. We don't know. But as far as I know, he's a human being, and if you're a human being, you feel emotions, and there's nothing you can do about that. So you just don't want to make meaning out of the emotions. And for more on that, uh, take into uh, watch the video from yesterday where I go into that uh, watch the first two and needed this awesome good Daniel I'm glad it was helpful okay so remember tomorrow we are going to talk about how all these things like maybe you're like I don't understand how these things that we talked about the last three days will really translate into actual gameplay um, so tomorrow we're gonna kind of wrap it all together in the actual gameplay section and how this all um, works together um, so I will see you at the same time tomorrow. I'm going to also try YouTube uh, just to see. I've never, um, well, I haven't used it in years and years and years. So we just want to see how the YouTube thing works. Um, so I will be uh, streaming to YouTube and hopefully Facebook, hopefully both. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow we'll talk about that. But I hope these are six things help you out in your cornhole mental game. And uh, please, if this was helpful, share it with someone that you think it might help. And um, good luck out there throwing, everyone. We'll see you next time.